For many years, I have been on a quest to discover purpose in our cosmically insignificant lives. I look for order in the chaos, reason in the unreasonable, meaning in the meaningless. In short, I, like many others before me, seek the meaning of life. I have searched the world far and wide, looked to the vastness of the stars and dissected the smallest of atoms for clues towards enlightenment. I've studied history's greatest work and probed the manifestos and religions of all people and dissected them with only the sharpest minds among my peers. I've also retreated into the inner depths of my own consciousness beyond the reach of mere average humans. I have learned a lot. Many seek out my wisdom, which I share freely with the universe here on the internet, and even more freely for a small entry fee on patreon.com slash Tim Sway. I have come to a conclusion. In order to live a truly fulfilled life, each and every one of us must find our own undeniable meaning for existence, perfectly balanced between self and others, tangible and spiritual. As the Buddhists say, the Dharma of the middle way. We all must find our center, and unfortunately, I cannot help you with this. But I can help you find the center of this 2x4. There it is. Introducing the center square, available only at squaretools.com. Hurry while supplies last. Okay, that's enough of that silliness. Let's get into it. Uh, what's the origin story of this tool? How did I design, develop it, and manufacture it, and how can you get it? I'm gonna tell you all that right now. First off, I'll say this is the limited edition first run, uh, and you can only get it at squaretools.com. If you wanna get into that first run, I'd suggest acting quickly, because I think they're gonna sell out pretty quick based on interest I've seen. Uh, if they do sell out, I will make more. It just may take a while, uh, and there's other reasons. So, well, let's just get into it. As an artist, uh, basically all I do is I create problems for myself and then I solve them. Sometimes I find these problems in the processes of solving the problem that are problems unto themselves. And you know, that's what tools are for, right? So over the years I've uh, developed a sort of side business where I make tools that solve problems that I have in the manufacturing process in my workshop. And I figure if I have the problem, maybe someone else does. But this one I think is going to be useful to a lot of people because it's about finding the middle of things. And if you make anything, you probably need to find the middle of it at some point in time. Finding the center on a guitar can be a little bit challenging because these lines aren't parallel and there's lots of contours and shapes and stuff. And so that's where the idea for this tool came to be. Um, now, I'm going to point out that like you can still screw up <laughs> with this. It's not idiot proof when you're talking about doing some very complex, you know, shapes with uh, different heights and textures and stuff. So you do you know, need to use your brain, but this makes it a lot easier than some of the other ways. And when you do get into using, you know, more traditional blocks of wood and stuff, this is like dead simple. So uh, first, you know, there's a bunch of other types of center finding tools that are out there. And um, the one I just created doesn't necessarily do everything that all of these tools do. It's filling some voids of what they don't do. But let's just talk about some of the ones that exist. It's like probably one of the most common ones is this type of thing where if you spin it and then you find the middle there uh, on my square, I made it so you could do that. And there's a visual mark for, you know, if you need to do that quickly. Things like these like center finding rulers I was developing. Um, where you start with zero in the middle and then you count and do the math to either side. But I don't need to know the number most of the time. I just need to know where the center is. And when you start trying to be really accurate like that, all these lines, it's very difficult to see and time consuming. And of course we can always just measure, right? That's 22.69, I can go 11.34, you know, whatever. I can do all that and then find it and, and mark it. And that's what I usually do, but I wanted to find a better way to do it quicker. I could squeeze this little tool right here, make a mark. And then I just simply go up here, squeeze it, make a mark. I connect those two dots and I have my center. I'm done. That's it. I cut this on my laser to make it a little bit easier to see and discuss some of the things I'm talking about. So this sensor was laser cut is pretty darn accurate. So here you see it in action. I just simply squeeze those two brass pins right on the edge there. And I'm in the middle. Now these brass pins are lined up with this hole and these points are lined up with this point. So if you're using the brass pins, you should really use the hole to mark your placement right there because there is the potential of doing something like this, right? We twist the tool a little bit. 
But if you do that, that hole is still going to be centered because that's between the two points. But I also made it with these points for areas where you can't grab and then you can actually visually use the points, line them up how you want them, and then you can visually do it, right? You can also use this upside down, of course, and uh, however it's going to work for you. You want to use, like here, I can squeeze these two parallel edges just like that, flat against there, and trust my hand, hands and my eyes and my fingers, and then mark that hole. And check this out, I put several holes, so I could mark it there too, or even if it's a little bit wider, I can use these holes to mark it. I can find the center here, and I can mark it all the way down here, and now I have two points of reference so I can draw straight lines. Make sense? So here, if I go here at this two inch parallel part, I can squeeze it and get my center, but then we go in here where we have some compound shapes, and you can see it's a little wider, and I can still get my center. Now, suppose we didn't have a line. I can squeeze here, get my center. Let's do it again here, get my center. And now I can connect those two lines. And this tool is going to be more accurate than me and my pencil, that's for sure. I already messed this up. <laughs> Uh, but the other thing about having these little brass pins is I can measure inside holes too. Like I can go into this pickup hole. It's the exact middle of my pickups right there. I have to kind of put two hands on it to make sure I'm good and then poke it, you know. I can do it here. And now using this tool, I can do this where I have this sitting in these pockets and I can take this hole right here, put a mark. It was designed with guitars in mind. So you can see there are limitations that right now it is about seven eighths of an inch when it's closed and then fully open. It is a, just shy of five inches. And those are all measurements well within the realm of what I need to do making guitars, but they might not solve everyone's problems. If it gets smaller than this, you're still on your own to do it some other way. But if it gets larger than this, I figure why not use this space? So by just adding a center point in the middle of the handle section, and putting some brass pins in the handle. Now we can measure larger things. Now I will point out that this side is not as accurate as this side, right? This is a much, this is what we built the tool for. This is sort of a bonus. So if you're looking to just quickly get the center of something larger, this is gonna be close enough for you, give or take, you know, a 32nd of an inch. Whereas with this, you can really hone in. The reason the back side is not as accurate as the front side is because these aren't all, the pins in these holes in this point are not all in perfect alignment, so you can kind of real easily get twisted up here and not know if you're centered. And there's a couple things you can do. You can find visual, you know, clues and whatnot to sort of help you. Um, but the main problem is, like I said, because it doesn't, these aren't lined up. Uh, what you can do is you can just give yourself a straight edge to put it against like that. And now if we squeeze these tight and they're both touching that straight edge, we know that's the dead center. Now I'll take you through the design process and the problem solving of it. And this is where I get to talk about Send Cut Send, who is helping to sponsor this project and tell you how awesome they are because <laughs> they are. The first idea I had for a center finder was actually very different than this design. It was um, more like a gear with two racks, like geared racks. Uh, I don't have anything to show you for it because I got so frustrated by it. I just tossed it all. Part of where I got to this point, because Tom, the infinite craftsman on Instagram, who also is a co-host of the Maker Skills podcast, mentioned the Fibonacci ruler or Fibonacci jig or whatever it's called, which is basically something like this, but it has like an angle to it. So it gives you like that golden ratio. Then the other tool that inspired me is that if you look in like catalogs, like the Rockler catalogs and whatnot, they make these tools to help you find even placement for like people to make hat racks and cup hat racks or whatever. So with those two things in mind, I went to Thingiverse and I downloaded and 3D printed this, which was part of one of those longer system. You see it works fine, but obviously it's not gonna work for what I need to do and the, the size, the scale, the quality of it's all out of whack. So then I started changing the shape and design and messing around on my wood laser cutter. Here you can see a little, little bit closer to what I was doing, uh, messing around with points and stuff. Um, still no good, still too big, still too clunky. Uh, got it a little bit smoother and a little bit cleaner here. And here's one where I, you know, got that even, it was so skinny now that I could no longer make it out of wood and have it work properly. And so that's where Send Cut Send comes in. So this is my first Send Cut Send file and uh, I couldn't believe how, how quick and easy it was. And again, like how accurate it was, because obviously these holes have to be accurate. Everything has to be accurate uh, for this to work. And for me to stick these, 
these brass pins in and, and just have a friction fit. Uh, it, it was just incredible. Now I've done a larger batch and like it, the the accuracy of the scale was fantastic too. But so this is the, the first one I had made from them and you can see it's working fine, but I still hadn't figured out that I don't need these parts, <laughs> right? And, uh, and I tried laser etching my logo on there, which I thought looked really cool. Come on, focus. I thought that looked really cool, but the heat of my laser doing that warped this a little bit and so it made it inaccurate. So I realized, okay, if I'm gonna do branding on these, I can't do it on the metal. I have to find some other way. And so then it was at this point, now that I had this real working metal prototype, I realized I can remove these, maybe extend the handles to make it a little more comfortable. And, um, and then by extending these handles, it gave me the opportunity to do these wooden handles that I could cut here on my laser, put my logo on, make it a little more like a tool. Cause you know, it's pretty common for tools to have wooden handles. Uh, and now we're good. And so I have this made, everything's working fine. Send cut send files are perfect. Uh, and I thought I was done. And then right as I was about to pull the trigger, I realized that I could use this space too by simply adding that point. One of the great things about doing my design work this way instead of using something like Kickstarter or whatever is now I, I fronted the cost to do my first run and it's a small run. I can get them out in your hands and now everybody that goes out and invests in one of these is gonna help me make the next batch even better. That's how I did it with the square and I, I just think that's a really fun way to do it. Uh, Kickstarter is great because it's asking you to believe in me, but I'd rather like believe in myself first before I rely on that and prove to you that I have something worth pursuing. Uh, and I think I do. Remember how I said sendcutsend.com is awesome? Here's where they get even more awesome. They were so great and easy to work with throughout the whole process. And they, uh, you know, they, they threw in some complimentary features for me to try some different finishes and whatnot. And when I told them about the project in this video and what I wanted to do, they loved it. They loved it so much that they were willing to give me a huge discount on the first order of the first batch that I made so I can pass that savings on to you. <laughs> uh, this is exciting. Uh, so this original batch is 75 of them for the first limited edition run. And I'm going to sign and number each one. And I'm selling them right now for a few bucks less than what the product will actually be if I do continue to make them thanks to sendcutsend.com. And on top of that, they gave me a 15% coupon code. It is 15 sway all the way. And that will help you save money. If you have any products that you want to develop or design or any one-off pieces of metal that you need cut for your projects, use that coupon code over at sendcutsend.com and you will get what you need for 15% off. It's good for up to $100 off, so you can use it up to a pretty large order. And remember, there's a $29 order minimum, so sometimes it's worth getting two of something instead of paying $29 for one. You know, you understand. But so check that out. Thank you all very much to Send Cut Send, and uh, go use that coupon, man. You know, just like make like a metal pick guard for your Stratocaster or something, whatever. Like it's, it's, it's so cool. <laughs> All right, now that we got the design finalized, I got the parts cut from Send, Cut, Send, and then I had to cut a bunch of parts myself here and then assemble them. And I had my daughter, Maddie, help me do some of the assembly. She likes to come in and make a little extra money sometimes in the shop. Uh, she has the patience to sit down and do this type of work with me, which is great. So um, that's what's happening here. So I've been making stuff and shipping it for years and years of all different varieties. And uh, one of the things that always bumps me out is packaging and the waste. And so I try to make my packaging as efficient and wasteless as possible. If I just make the packaging part of the product, then it's a win-win, right? So unfortunately, this is not all reclaimed material that I use, although I was very excited to be able to use my holocore doors in the manufacturing process. But a little bit of new MDF, instead of buying a bunch of bubble wrap, and now we have this, this package with this one piece of recyclable cardboard. This goes into, unfortunately, a poly mailer until I can do something better than that. Um, and then it gets to you safely, and you can use this package to display it or just keep it safely in your drawer. And this particular tool, these little brass pins do stick out the bottom a little bit, but you can still hang it on the wall and it still sits in there fine. They just don't, it just leans out a little bit, which makes it easier to grab. I have these cutouts for making the cases for this tool, like a lot of them. They're too cool to throw away. Does anybody have any use for them? If you have some art projects you wanna make with like a lot of these, hit me up.
That's the story of the Center Square in its infancy. I can't wait to get it out in your hands, and the only place you can get it is at squaretools.com. Uh, they will probably sell out quickly, uh, and if they do, don't worry. I will make another batch. It might just take me a little while to get there. And there's some other tools over there you may find interesting, too. There's videos for most of them, not, not all of them. Go check it out. It's my little side project. I'm pretty proud of it. It is growing and evolving as we go. Um, I want to thank Send Cut Send very much, of course, for making it so quick and easy to actually have this idea of mine become some real thing I can put out in the world. And I want to thank my patrons over at patreon.com slash Tim Sway for being so supportive and helpful to me when I do all of this stuff. All right, thank you all very much and be good. Find your center. Um. I just got a text. I lost my center. <laughs>